Let's address the title of this video, first yeah. of all. We're sick of each other. <laughs> that's it, that's the video. Okay, bye. So I did a Q&A on my Instagram recently, and tell me why, a lot of the questions that I got, I mean, I feel like a lot of the questions that we get in general are relationship questions. And like, I remember I posted a TikTok once about how we've been together for almost five years, and tell me why, all the comments were like, how are y'all not sick of each other yet? How are you not tired of him yet? Oh my God, no, 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 how do you make it work? I could never do that, right? To answer all of those questions on how are we not sick of each other yet, we are sick of each other. I feel like that's something that couple YouTubers just don't be talking about. Like we're always like, oh, you know, going on every year, love of my life, like my soulmate. I feel like couples in general online like post all the fancy stuff they do is all cute, you know, kissing by the pier and stuff. <laughs> Ooh, look, I caught a fish. You know what I mean? It's not like that every day. It's not like right? that, no. And we got really, like you and me, let's be honest, we have very short attentions. I know, we do. And then all the comments will be like, oh my gosh, that's so inspirational. Like, how are you not sick of each other? It's like, we do get sick of each other. I wouldn't even say sick of each other, but it's very natural. Pits, if you're around, if you're around, around somebody for so long, you're gonna, you know, not every day is gonna be a walk in a park. You're gonna stuff. find a thing or two you don't like. Yeah, you're gonna bump heads every now and then. Like, luckily we don't bump heads a lot. Right, but we still bump heads. She got a big ass head too, so we <laughs> bump it in and everything. And I seen this question here. Somebody was like, can y'all do a little Q&A while on a date like you did in the beginning? And I'm like, we should do that. So today's our date day. And it's also our weekly mental check-in day weekly that we do every week. But yeah, <laughs> you it was your turn to plan this week. Yeah, so. so we take turns planning what we do on these days. Today we're gonna have a little date at home on the balcony, some supermarket sushi. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna sit down. We're gonna do our little weekly check-in, and what a weekly check-in is. I mean, I'm sure some of y'all know already. It's basically a free couples therapy session, which is great because why pay 175 an hour for a couples therapy session? Or no, I shouldn't say that. You just exposed ourselves because you knew how much it was. With that being said, it's like it gives us a chance to let each other know like, oh, here's how my week went, here's how your week went, here's how my week with you went, here's how my week with you went. This is what I liked about this week. This is what I didn't like about yeah. this week. You pissed me off when you did this. Did I piss you off on anything? Yeah. Did you flush the toilet that time? You probably didn't. Things like that, you know? I'll say one right now. I don't care. <laughs> I don't like when you touch me with your toes in bed. I'm gonna throw it out there. What do you think of that? Hmm? I don't like it when you, you he freaking farts and then he'll cover the blanket and he thinks it's so funny. That's hilarious. Like, like I feel like it could make someone blind. Yeah, but your toes are dry. I feel like I'm, I'm snuggled up next to an eagle or something. Because <laughs> I'm i like a baby. I need to like, if I'm sleeping, to, to not have nightmares, I need to like, I take my toes and I like do this to his legs. <laughs> Just so I know he's there still. Yeah, all my leg hair is like laid. Like the <laughs> I think we're gonna head over to the fish section first. Get all the different options they have. I think I'm good with the ones we have. We got this one. We got two spicy tuna rolls. I used to not like raw sushi before. Then this one came in my life. And yeah, here we are. But I love a good sushi roll with cream cheese in it. You want a Philadelphia roll? Mm, I would prefer it if it had like tempura in it. Tempura and then cream cheese and then a raw sushi on top. That one looks good. Yeah, Cooked eel, crab meat, cucumber. If these are two spicy tuna rolls, we should probably just get one. For the longest time, I want to say like around Christmas time, right? Trey and I were eating shabu like every single day. And every time we would come here around Christmas time, it would be sold out. So sometimes we would have to go to a different store that was like three minutes away just to get our shabu meat. Hi! Hi, nice to meet you guys! Hi. Is it okay if I you for oh, years? Oh, really? Vlog. Yeah. We literally just started vlogging today. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, so we're at H Mart and we just ran into oh, I'm Jasmine. You're so pretty by the way. Thank you. I love your lashes. Oh no. Nice. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. I hope you have a good birthday. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I love meeting you guys. I feel like whenever we meet people, I just be talking because I'm nervous. Like literally any gap to talk, I'm just like what you guys doing? What do you have planned today? Oh my gosh, it's your birthday. How old are you? Like, I feel like I come off as very like aggressive, but I promise it's just because I'm freaking nervous. But that's so sweet. She was that's like, fun. oh, we've been watching you guys for years. Everybody in the comments wish I forgot her name. I remember Jasmine's name, but everybody go wish her friend a happy 16th birthday. We're gonna film a TikTok. Y'all, look at this. It's a baby bottle. Come on, Melanie. You know Melanie Martinez? No, you want to school with her or something? No. I guess I'm just a play date to you. Her? 
Don't show this to Melody, y'all. I feel like I get so nervous when we meet people. I'm like, my brain is like, don't trauma dump. Don't trauma dump. Don't trauma dump. So since it was my idea, I'm going to set up everything, make it look nice. But thanks to y'all, we got a sponsorship today, right, babe? Today's sponsor is Tipsy. So look at these beautiful bottles. Now, if you guys know us personally or me personally, I like to throw them back sometimes, you know? <laughs> but the beautiful part about Tipsy is that they send you a specially curated bottle of sake every three months. It is a subscription that I didn't think I needed until I got it. Each one comes with like a virtual tasting video for each featured. Oh, sake. yeah, because I heard that there's multiple ways of drinking sake, right? Mm -hmm. You can either have it warm, you can have it cold, oh. right? Okay, cool. Wait a minute, you guys, look at this. So this came with our package. They give a little card for each sake, and it'll even show you the temperature that you should serve it at. I want to go with the Tozai one, the Snow Maiden. This one? Yes, it says here. This one says it has to be served cold, right. and it could be served over ice. So Trey's going to pour that out for me. So while he's doing that, I just want to mention that Tipsy is the largest online sake store in the US. They carry over 400 labels and counting. I took a look at their website this week and one of the things I really like is that each product page actually has a recommended food pairing and recommended temperature serving. Each box comes with these six 10 ounce bottles and it comes with all the info cards. Wait, uh, he's already drinking it. You have to wait for me. So this is everything we got in our box, but they do frequently update the contents of their box, which is really cool, which I really like because you might try something new. And look how beautiful these bottles are, first of all. And if you join their membership, there are so many membership perks, including virtual taste testing videos for every featured sake. You get a beginner's guide booklet. You get a copy of one of their newsletters. And what I really like is their membership pricing along with free shipping. And of course, you get to try all of these. You get to try six different sakes, which if you're like me and you're someone who likes to taste everything, then this is perfect for you. And then if you try one you like, you can order the full size one on their website as well. You know, when we were brand new, we didn't hook y'all up. So we have a discount code, we have it up here on the screen. And once again, thank you to the people at Tipsy for this wonderful brand deal and let's get back to setting up the day. I bring this table out. I feel like we never use our balcony. Think you may be in my Smile. Give it all to see you. Excuse me, sorry. I hope it was my It's not bad. Check it out. You and my guitar. It's quite delicious. Going back to the topic we were talking about earlier of being bored in our relationship. Like Trey said, I feel like it's easy on social media for people to just post like their highlights, right? Like TikTok, Instagram, all that is just a giant highlights reel. And I feel like before I got in a relationship with Trey, honestly, I was in very toxic relationships. And even with men, even with men that you know, I wasn't necessarily like in a relationship with, but I was just talking to, I didn't have the best luck like with men in general and even some women to be honest. And I feel like because of that, when I got into my relationship with Trey, it was easy for me to be quote unquote bored sometimes. And, and let me explain, okay, before you guys are like, oh my gosh, that's so mean, she's going their relationship bored. In my past relationships, I was so used to chaos. Right, thank you. I recently came across a TikTok, right? And it was this therapist. She was saying how for people who are used to a toxic relationship, it's easy for them, the second they get into a healthy relationship, they start to subconsciously look for that chaos because that's what they were naturally used to in the past, right? So for example, like in the beginning, I was so used to having to worry about other women, right? Other females. And because I was so used to being toxic, I feel like subconsciously I was looking for more reasons to be toxic. And the same therapist, she did another TikTok and she was like it's like very easy to look at like a healthy relationship and label it as boring just because there's not as big of a contrast like there's no cold and hot there's no constant fighting so because there's no quote-unquote action going on <laughs> go ahead yeah there's no intense highs and intense lows Intense highs and intense lows. In a toxic relationship, the highs feel really high and yeah. the lows feel really lows. Like, yeah. just look like at like a roller coaster. Think of um, Maddie and um, Nate. what's up? Oh, yeah. And Nate. Think of their relationship and euphoria, right? Like, it's when they're when they're really good, they're super good and they're on a high. But when things are bad, it's like, yeah. it's really intense. It feels like the best thing ever, but then it feels like the worst thing ever. Yeah, because they have so much contrast, because they're so used to toxicity, any ounce of happiness that they feel, it feels like an intense high. But in, when you take a healthy relationship, it's easy to think that it's boring, especially if you're someone like me and Maddie, unfortunately, right? Like if you're used to like what we were used to, narcissism, the constant gaslighting, the constant abuse, you know? And once I got with him and I wasn't experiencing those things, I would constantly think that something was wrong. 
Boo. Jump scare. <laughs> I just wanted to touch up on this too because I know we're using the word boring a lot. And as I'm editing this, I've realized I probably should have used different terms for this. And I wasn't referring to boring as not having excitement in our lives and not having and not having fun times. Like we do have a lot of fun times together and do kind things for each other to make sure we're keeping things exciting in our relationship. So when we're saying boring, we don't necessarily mean lack of effort and lack of love. It was more so me expressing how I was used to drama. When I'm using the term boring, it's more so tied to my self-limiting beliefs that in order for a relationship to be a good relationship, there has to be a lot of fights because my previous relationships were exactly like that. Hope that makes sense. I don't know if this is unnecessary for me to point out, but I just don't want anybody watching this to misinterpret it and think that, to think that it means it's okay to not be in love and to not put an effort in your relationship. Okay, like still put effort in the relationship, guys. Probably should've used a different word. Okay, bye. Yeah, it's kind of almost like withdrawals. I heard this podcast on TikTok, right? Like, and they were like, honestly, toxic relationships feels like a drug. So Sometimes. And honestly, it does. Like, if anybody's ever been in a toxic relationship, you know it kind of is like a drug. There's so much manipulation that keeps you into staying, and it's like you know it's bad for you, yet you can't leave. So then the second I got with him, it's like there would be so many times, like around the two year mark, right? Or where I would feel like the relationship wasn't healthy just because there wasn't. A lot of chaos and i'm sure like a lot of people feel this way too like with work i'm sure some people go to work and they're like that, that shift was so boring yeah. does that mean that they want to quit their job no they're like that day in particular was just really There's boring to do that day. right and it's like that was something that i'm really happy i learned because i feel like it's one of the things that kind of helped our relationship grow stronger was acknowledging that right and acknowledging that i do have some self-limiting beliefs about our relationship that i need to overcome and i need to grow out of and i'm very thankful Cool to have a partner that's willing to work with me in that sense but going into like our weekly check-in and stuff it's one of the things we try to implement to make sure our relationship is healthy we got together what when we were 18 something like that and we're 23 right now there was so much growth babe. like within that five years span like little children to yeah like children whatever we are now into <laughs> obviously when you change so much as a person in a relationship you're not only navigating like your relationship but you're navigating through adulthood together i mean a lot of the times like people change as a person and that their partner cannot keep up with the person that they're changing into say so, like i'm a completely different person from the yeah. girl you first started dating and you're a completely different person from the guy i started dating so i think about it all the time and i'm like we're so different we got pretty lucky that yeah. we still like each other. Yeah, because me now wouldn't date you back then. Oh, hell yeah. I wouldn't date you back then either. You know what I mean? Or, well, actually, hold on. No, no, no. In, in, a, in, a, in a maturity sense of things of that nature. Like, yeah. us back then dating was perfect. And now the, who we are now dating is perfect. But me but now can't go to you back then and it'd be the same thing. Right. Right? It's two different people. So that's where I feel like little weekly check-ins like this. There's... Stop flying southwest. The weekly check-ins are just like another form and level of communication. Just so yeah. like we can also see how we're both doing like mentally, individually. Asking somebody every day how you're doing, how you're doing, how you're doing. You're not really getting much out of that as polite as that is. But if you give a week's worth of time to pass mm -hmm. and let all those events build up, then you have an actual conversation. I feel like I'm so bougie right now. The glasses? We never film outside, huh? This is what it's like. This used to be Baymax's restaurant. Now we're eating on it. So with that being said, let's, let's get into, into our check -in. weekly check-in. So, Miss Alyssa Lauren. Yes. How are you doing today? Are you doing well? Doesn't matter. Here's the first question. <laughs> what went well in our relationship this week? Ooh, okay. I have a couple. So the video that I posted before this video, like my little mental health check-in, the one that I filmed with Trey and the one that I filmed with my friends. So that day when I had filmed with Alan, Dez, and Bea, go watch that video by the way if you haven't watched it yet. Um, we obviously talk about very triggering things. You know, being very vulnerable with my friends. And after we had filmed that, we had made plans to go to this one bar. If they're watching this, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, is that the reason why? But I didn't tell them this in the moment because I didn't want to like bring the mood down because I knew everybody was excited about going, but I was honestly feeling like so drained and triggered after filming that video. I think one thing that really went well this week was, because he had came to pick me up, right? After work and I, I feel like I really appreciate how you were being with me like on that whole car ride home and like 
I feel like sometimes when I'm in that mode, all I really need is comfort and like someone to listen to me. And like literally the whole car ride home, I feel like I was just talking and like you were giving your input too, obviously. But I feel like you have been having like such a good radar of like understanding what I need in a certain moment because sometimes you know I'm sure everybody feels this way like if you're sad some people they they don't want to talk they just want to be around you or some people they want to be alone right like everybody handles their triggers differently and I feel like one thing that went well this week is is that is like the way that you were able to be there for me in that situation is something that I really appreciate so I, I really appreciate that thank you so I think for me, I think the majority of the week, I am cutting hair. And you have done a really good job with letting me come home and kind of diffuse the day. I'm so happy he's mentioning this because I've been trying. I really have. So usually, like when I come home back then, <laughs> it would be instant. Hey, how are you? How are you? Here we go. How are you? Who's what are we doing? Right? Where are we going to eat? Like, what are we going to do? Like, it was very much in my face when I just had a day's work you know I'm, a little, yeah. I'm not the pessimistic kind of like get, get the fuck away from me but I need a little bit of space to kind of like go from work mind to not at home yeah so there's a bit of a to diffuse diffusing yeah. process there and you know this is something like this is why these weekly check-ins are so helpful because in the beginning when you first brought this up to me I couldn't help but to feel like sad or like almost like dumb in a sense because I was like oh like I, I didn't know that he felt that way right because I feel like I do have very hyper energy at times and like <laughs> no because he would come You're home very much a good retreat. yeah he would come home right or we'd be on the car ride home and I'm like okay what are we gonna do what are we about to get into and he's like dude I just worked like an eight hour shift you need like at least like 30 minutes at the very least to just yeah. have to yourself like take your shit and then <laughs> Then I'll be Eat back. your food because I think you did a good job of realizing that okay, he's not going anywhere, like, he's not gonna leave me or anything. Mm -hmm. He just I have the rest of like my lifetime with him, mm -hmm. therefore, the 30 minutes an hour to two hours that he wants to himself it's is nothing, it's not, it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Also, too, in the beginning, I felt like he would have like a certain energy when I would talk to him when he would get out off work and I, this was before I knew he felt this way so in the back of my head sometimes I would get upset because I the way that I would interpret it is like oh he's not happy to see me after work he doesn't want to be next to me during work but it's like the second that you like broke that down to me and explained that like you just need your time to unwind after work I even have like my own versions of that but mine are different because mine will be like when we're driving sometimes I just want silence I know. Sometimes. <laughs> so we'll be driving, right? So we'll be driving in the car. And, and I put and, a bomb and song. And I feel like, yeah, she put a song and I feel like talking that day, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And I'll see her like rewind the song. Yeah, because I'll miss the part of the song that I really want to like date. Music is a, it's a very big deal to, to her. So I yeah. learned that, okay, I can't talk all the time. If I'm having a bad day, I want to listen to Daddy Issues, slowed, remix version. So it's like, I gotta listen to it and, you know, just really like be I my feelings. I had to communicate with him too in that sense. I was like, hey, I hope I'm not being mean, but it's like... Delta! <laughs> I had to explain to him like, oh, I hope I'm not being mean, but like, sometimes when we're driving, like, I, I would like if the car ride is quiet because and I think that's that's something that's valid like it's something so small but stating your boundaries is so important right because when you think about friends right it's easy for us to be like I don't feel like hanging out with that friend that day so I'm just not gonna text them that day or whatever right but when you live with someone and you're around them constantly it's important to state those small boundaries even if it yeah. does seem silly mental boundaries are just as important as physical boundaries mm -hmm. is there something that I've done that upset or hurt you this week mm -hmm. Not really hurt. I didn't flush the toilet. Huh? That yes, like twice. One of them was a skid mark. Hey, you, no one can control skid marks. <laughs> That's why you have to. There's double no check. special way to use the restroom to control a skid mark. This is why we have these checkups because then stuff like this comes up. <laughs> you can't control a skid mark. You don't plan on it happening. I know, but I double check my. I don't no, look. You don't. I don't, you look, don't look. No, I don't look at the turd because it disgusts me. So that should be green and I just wouldn't know you guys. I never look at my turn. But I look to make sure there's no skin marks. Cause that will ruin my day. I don't know what it is. Anyway, um anything no I I mean we will regularly like get on each other's nerves sometimes. I think there was one thing 
for me but then you had caught on to it right away with Trey and I like one thing that I have like a really bad problem with is like how do I say it? It's it. digesting people's tone I mean I don't know if it's like the trauma and stuff but I have a habit of like getting really thrown off if he has like a certain tone with me and it was like something that we had to talk about like from the jump because in the beginning I wouldn't understand like why he spoke a certain way until I like met his family and like <laughs> and then I like realized that they all speak a certain way right it's, like not his fault it's just like we both come from very different like families so like My I know was never on purpose yeah it was never intentional like it was never to be mean or like it's just how I spoke yeah I don't know I'll get like thrown off by certain things like I don't remember what it was specifically this week I think we might have been in a rush to get ready somewhere um but you had said like to hurry up or something but you had said it in like your aggressive tone right but he had caught it right away and i think you were like oh sorry like i don't mean to like say it like that it's just you know like i'm about to be late yeah. and that was like the only thing i work on like being more aware of it because back then it would just kind of come out yeah but i noticed it's like like code switching like whenever we're around his family he'll talk like that again i think with your family you guys just uh have a more straight up and like aggressive way of speaking to people like it's just very blunt right and i think like the way i grew up is like i kind of tiptoe around the bush about certain things or like i try to say it in like the nicest sugar-coated way possible and like he just naturally didn't grow up like that that's a regular <laughs> they're so close to our balcony we should just like throw they should just, at it. no they should throw a ladder and then we just hold on until we reach our stuff uh, was there anything that i did that upset you it would be time Alyssa. was i like nonchalant again about something yeah so she's wait can i guess was it in the parking structure and i was taking forever yeah so time doesn't exist, Alyssa. No, yes it does. Time is well, relative. time is a social construct. It's not real, it doesn't exist. Right, okay. 4D realm. Nah, nah, it's not funny, I've got school. I'm not laughing, I've got school. But when we're in a parking structure, I'm saying it in a funny way here. Like, you know, I'm very... Quick. It's my family... Quick. Not going back to my family, we're very paranoid people sometimes. We think everybody's looking at us when that Everybody's guy is like out is. to get y'all yeah. or something. So when we're in a parking structure at midnight, you know, get your stuff, let's go. I know, but I think it's just because like I've lived here for so long that I know like nothing's know. really gonna happen. But, but, it but only... no, I understand. It's like it was late and I was taking a really long time to get like the groceries or something. But that's only know. when I'm with, with you. If I was with a friend or anything, I wouldn't care as much. So me doing Damn, so if your friend gets jumped, you're like, whatever. Yeah, it was just that. I'm sorry, I'll try to work on it. That, that is my fault, I was taken for a Sorry. What is something I did this week that made you feel loved? Oh, I know, because I started making a photo album about it. Like, I'd be playing video games on my desk, you know, not streaming. <laughs> And Alyssa would be hungry. I, I always tell you, you don't have, if you feel like eating by yourself, you don't have to make extra food so I could eat. But she does it anyways. So what she would start to do is she would make the food for herself. And then she'd always make double the food and bring it to me at my desk. It's like small. But it's I like you're my pet. Yeah. Shit. Like, I'm like, but I, I want to like make it. sure you don't go hungry. Because then in my head that I'm crunching and they're like, who's eating? And I'm like, <laughs> for me, I think it's the little things that you've been doing recently. Like, we recently downloaded this app. If y'all follow me on TikTok, you've seen it already. It's called Note It. And basically, you can write, like, notes to your partner, but you don't get a notification. I have a widget on my home screen, and then whenever I'll look at my phone, there will always be a new Note It. So it'll be like, oh, I it'll hope be a, you... Or it'll be a picture of a... <laughs> Or the <laughs> but like I would look at my phone and it would be like, oh, I hope you have a great day today. Or if I was out with my friends, I would say, I really miss you. Or he'd be like, don't forget to eat today. So I think those small things. Don't like, forget to wash your ass. <laughs> Stop. What are your main stressors right now, and how can I help? What stresses me out right now, if anything? is the stress of feeling like I don't have enough time. Just be like me. It doesn't exist. Just kidding. You feel like you just have a lot on your plate right now? Yeah. You have a seaweed on your plate. Is there anything that I can do? Maybe I can take on some more like household chores. Maybe. Because we both try to do like an equal amount of chores, but like if you feel like you don't have as much time to yourself or like alone time with friends and stuff like that, maybe I can like take up some more this week. 
because I hung out with my friends a lot last week. I feel like I've been hanging out you with hang my out friends with your a lot. Friends more than I do. Yeah, so I feel like because I've been hanging out with my friends more, you've been taking on like a more you've been taking on more tasks around the house, right? Like if you have to pick me up, like you have to make time for it. If, if I don't have time to take the dogs on a walk, then when he gets home, he takes them for a walk. So maybe this week we can like prioritize like your time. Maybe we could try. Um, for me, I'm happy to say that I've been getting a bit better. I think I kind of like backtracked a little bit when we filmed that last video with Alan and Des and them. Just because it was like bringing up, you know, it was a lot to like talk about. For a quick second it felt like I was like taking two steps forward just to take two steps back. But I think because the day after that I just gave myself the whole day off to like rest, I feel a lot better about it. So I think that was like the main stressor this week. but. Other than that, I'm doing a really good job at like having a system to fall back on when I know I need to take care of myself. Yeah. Is there anything you want to share with me this week? Any new discoveries? I always have a new discovery of the week that I tell you about that part. Discovery? I beat my high score on Tetris again. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, yes. I need you to help me stop ordering hot pot. I'm addicted to it and I feel like I've been eating it too much. Okay. But how are we gonna stop because you eat it just as often as I do. I've literally been eating this one hot pot place. I've been ordering it like every two days. Meaning I'm eating it every day because then I'll have leftovers from the first day that I ordered it and then I'll eat it the next day and then the next day I won't have any more so then I order more. We're not sick and tired of each other. We want to push each other off the balcony just Sometimes. yet. Sometimes. Maybe tomorrow. Ow. Ow. Are you saying ow because my butt's boning? No. Okay, bye. We're not sick of each other. Three, two, one.